under. This is the full view. Now, after South Africa fell into a recession in the second quarter of this year, economic data for the third quarter is being watched very closely. Manufacturing production got off to a good start. We heard yesterday a 2.9% increase in June compared to the same month a year earlier. Now that is good news for factories, for the manufacturing sector. But other data, the purchasing managers' uh, indices released by banks, are painting a mixed picture about the health of the sector. Well, the manufacturing circle represents many of South Africa's large firms. We spoke to the executive director yesterday, Philippa Rodseth. We maintain that manufacturing is a great opportunity for job-rich growth. Mm. Um, we do, however, see in the data that uh, performance is inconsistent and too volatile. We don't see consistent, sustainable performance on a regular basis, and that's where we need to get to. And we advocate that it is possible to do that, but we've still got quite a long way to mm. go. If we look at where we've come from, let, let's just set this in, because manufacturing, the sector declined last year, I think, overall. And then it didn't get us into recession, but it certainly didn't help because there was a little bit of a contraction in, in the second quarter. So, so you're saying we're kind of on a very bumpy road. We are. We are on a bumpy road, but it's a road that we need to travel. Um, and as, as you rightly indicate, and it's, and it's um, well, how much of it is um, manufacturing responding to external demands and how much can manufacturing actually turn the circumstances around yeah. um, and we talk very much to what is it that we can get do to get back to the virtuous demand cycle because at the moment when we see um, uh, negative indicators as far as GDP output is concerned that talks to um, uh, low uh, demand um, and that then has a negative impact on manufacturing. Mm. So what is it that we can do in, as far as demand side interventions go to, to, to create additional demand which will then increase output by our manufacturers leading to growth and further investment, mm. greater um, employment levels and um, a greater um, uh, uh, consumer demand. Well, our manufacturers, at, and it's such a hard sector because we're talking about factories that make anything, uh, mm -hmm. basically. Um, but, but I've heard from construction firms, they're, they're looking to growth overseas, not necessarily in South Africa. You mm -hmm. know, how, how much of manufacturing is uh, products are sold in South Africa compared to that export market? Mm -hmm. Well, we advocate that manufacturing needs both to supply the, uh, the local sector but we also need to identify opportunities for export-led growth. Mm. Our economy is not uh, sufficient in size and demand um, to, to uh, uh, buy everything that is produced by manufacturers. And in the manufacturing sector, economies of scale are very important, so we need to identify extra markets. So one of the um, uh, clear theories is that manufacturing company does what it can to supply uh, locally, domestically, mm. um, uh, identify um, uh, sort of uh, efficient production lines, but then once that market is saturated, what are the opportunities for export-led growth? And quite a few of our manufacturing companies are indeed doing that in quite a, quite a productive and um, successful way. So, so one of the threats is U.S. President Donald Trump, uh, tariffs on, on steel exports. Uh, and then there is concern about the, even the car manufacturers. You know, will, will they ultimately be targeted? We're, we're making cars here. Uh, well, the big players are here making cars to sell all over the world. Are you, mm. are you watching that closely? What's, what's happening in we, the U.S.? We are. It talks very much to the complexity of our economy working within the global economy and what the, what the um, threats and also conversely the opportunities from a trade space could produce. Mm. So yes, um, uh, there is increasing protectionism, particularly from the US as far as tariffs on um, uh, imports into their country are concerned. But then um, what would the converse opportunities be? Um, where are um, 
companies that are not now supplying to the US, where are the opportunities for, for, for those mm. kind of economies Maybe the opening UK up? coming here and saying, let's, let's do more business. A big theme this week uh, has been inclusive capitalism, uh, whether we can reach that. Mm. But maybe manufacturing, uh, now that I think of it, would be key because, like you say, um, it, it's capitalism, it's profit making, but it's job creating as well. So, so it helps a broader society. Absolutely. Um, in, 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 in its most um, effective form, manufacturing does that inherently and naturally. It's about supply chains. Um, on the one side, we do need the demand-led growth and, and, and sometimes, and especially in our economy, those are uh, traditionally larger players and they are established supply chains, but there's opportunities to open up those supply chains. Um, and um, there are uh, forward and backward linkages in any um, product manufactured. So where are those op opportunities to become more inclusive and transformative mm. and often opportunities to um, different sized companies um, uh, along the supply chain. So, so final question, growth of nearly 3% in June sounds good, especially after a recession. You, you, I think you're saying we're not on a firm upward trajectory though. How do we get there? Demand side interventions. We need like what? to what do you promote. Want government to do? Yes, um, and, and 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 it's something that we actually need to do collaboratively. So, um, we need to um, increase the reputation of locally manufactured products. On the government side, there's a process of designation where government commits to buying certain locally manufactured product for certain um, sectors, transformers, for mm. example. So what is it that we can do as the private sector to uh, follow suit and identify where there are opportunities and value chains for import replacement? What is it that we are importing that we could in fact produce locally? Um, so, so that we grow our, our local demand pool. And then where are those opportunities for export-led growth? Um, so how do we become more informed, more adept, more agile at understanding where there are opportunities for um, uh, uh, trade opportunities as far as uh, different agreements are being negotiated or where are those export markets and how do we get there in an efficient way. Mm. So demand side interventions are absolutely critical to growing what we um, need um, and, and, and in so doing um, increase the sector and our production and uh, contribute to the growth of the economy. All right, so we couldn't bring you that yesterday, uh, but manufacturing data came out yesterday, a discussion there, then retail sales came out today, and all of this very closely watched after we had a recession confirmed in the second quarter. This all starts to point to where we're going uh, sort of for the rest of the year, and hopes are high. Now, government has called on small, medium and micro-sized businesses in the technology industry to come up with innovations that will address Africa's problems. Now, that's according to Deputy Minister of Telecommunications, uh, Stella Ndabeni Abrams, who was speaking at the ITU Telecoms World Conference currently underway in Durban. And this as government creates policy that will foster an enabling environment for SMMEs in the tech industry. Deputy Minister of Telecommunications, Delanda Beni Abrams, says government wants to create tech entrepreneurs rather than tenderpreneurs. However, as government tries to create an enabling environment for tech entrepreneurs, it says it's moving away from the tendering process. As a result, SMMEs have been warned not only to rely on government tenders for business. Dabini Abrams says government is putting in place policies that will require big technology companies to procure at least 30% of their technology needs from SMMEs. We develop policies and those policies must be canvassed so that we can get the consensus sufficient one, not that everybody will agree. For now we have 30%, we don't have 40%. Of course, we've got to work towards 50% and 60% that we agree with. But as a start, we're starting at 30% that we're saying we're not going to compromise. If you fail to at least meet that 30%, then we've got to deal with you. That's one thing that we all agree about. Yeah. Meanwhile, Charmaine Hovitt of Cisco Systems says research has shown that South Africa needs 49,000 SMMEs in order to meet the National Development Plan's target of 11 million jobs. While some believe tenders are designed to keep new entrants out of the market, a call has been made to the private sector and big business to support SMMEs. People are sitting with innovations. One 
two innovations, but they are not trading them because the market is reserved for certain people. And when you sit back and engage these people to say, guys, there is an innovation which you actually require, you are told to go through the tender process. I cannot influence a tender process. I cannot influence a department who requires a solution of my SMME member to say, please open up a tender process so that that person, person's IP can be exposed. The Department of Telecommunications has invited tech entrepreneurs to exhibit at the ITU Telecom World Conference. This is in an effort to enable them to secure business deals. The conference ends tomorrow. Balentlem Teto, SABC News, Durban.